Hello and welcome back everyone to the second part, as promised, of the Christian Saga. We first went over the history of Christory, and now this is the last thing I have to cover from Chris because I don't really care about any of the other stuff. This video will also have very minimal editing because consider this a taste tester into the world of Sonichu. I'll be wrapping up the plot, of course, but if you want to see what's happening, I invite you to go over and read them yourself. Just sit back and listen to this video, rather. Plus there's some nudity as it is Chris Chan, and I don't think I could show those in videos even if it's drawn, unfortunately, or fortunately. So what is Sonichu? As mentioned before, Sonichu is half Pikachu, half Sonic, that, I mean, it, it happened somehow, and from there we got into the world known as Quickville. And Sonichu sometimes is the main character and sometimes isn't, even though he's kind of the mascot of the series. Also, to give you an idea of the time between each comic, Issue 0 came out in 2004 and Issue 10 came out in 2010. So, uh, how do I begin to explain this? I guess the only way to actually get through this is the plots. Look, I just want you to know, if you get confused by this, it's not my fault. <laughs> I have no idea how to explain some of this, I barely understand it myself. So each comic is called an issue with episodes inside him. I don't really know why because the stories are very varying in length and I don't think they need to be split off into episodes. Some of them are like 3 pages or something and then some of them are like 20 pages. There's the main story and then the sub-episodes. These are just Chris's life as told by Chris but set in the world of Sonichu instead of in real life. And you can see the sub-episodes in the beginning but they stop after a while because that entire premise basically just became Sonichu as a comic because he decided to make himself the main character. So we start with issue 0 which is the origin story. No, it doesn't make things easier to understand. So in Sonic Adventure, all of the Chaos Emeralds make Chaos, which is this big monster thing that hangs out over here. And Sonic becomes this golden Sonic and fights him. That's the gist of it, in before Sonic fans get mad at me for not explaining the entire plot. So that's what we open on with Chris Chan. So Sonic gets kind of like knocked somewhere and his power gets fused with some rando Pikachu just like wandering around watching the fight like by a bush. So then that Pikachu becomes Sonichu and there's this random rainbow thing that happens creating a collision with some other Pokemon, a Raichu, just hanging out in the forest and now we get Rosichu who is the girl. That's the best way to describe these guys so far, the sometimes main character and the girl. You know how I mentioned the rainbow before? So Basically, since these two characters were being turned into what they are now, there were also these like Sonichu eggs created. This initially happens just like this and the eggs get scattered around the world, but later it's retconned so that the rainbow actually travels the eggs back in time, 18 years specifically, so that by the time we meet these characters in the comics they're old enough to have sex. I'm not kidding, that's the reason. This is just something I'm going to have to mention once here so you can keep it in mind and I don't have to keep bringing it up. When you open the comic, in the beginning he makes a lot of full page drawings to show stuff happening, but after it there's a huge abuse of text bubbles. They're not even bubbles or boxes a lot of the time, they're just, they're, they're kind of there, the text just kind of floats and it's, I guess it's up to you to see who's talking when. But that's just something to think about. Also, he doesn't distinguish between Sonichu, who is yellow, and Sonic's like gold form, which is like also yellow here. So it looks like there's two Sonichus, and there's not, but I don't know which one's which. Also, the only way I can describe this is you'll see like a, gr a grotesque, like, Cronenberg form of a character that seems to be growing two legs or two arms or something. It's actually them turning their heads or moving, and Chris wanted to do that mid-image, so they're not like turning into like weird monsters, it's just them turning around. Also, Chris Chan watched a lot of s Saturday morning cartoons, so the end result is his storytelling mirrors a lot of that stuff. He thought it was the norm for product placements in the same vein, full page ads for fictional games and sonic too much in between random pages of the comic, and later Cherry Cola is used as a product directly involved in the plot later. So now with our Sonichu lore established, we get to Genesis of the Love Hogs, yes that's the real title. Sonichu is confused and wanders through the forest. He comes across the trainer, who is not explained or introduced properly at all. She just kind of turns up and says hello and it's honestly kind of confusing. But anyways, they talk and Rosichu gets introduced immediately as a love interest. They talk about marrying Sonichu and Rosichu off together. Like, Rosichu is just standing standing in the same room with the trainer, and the trainer is like, you should marry Rosichu, and the two immediately fall in love. 
in like the space of an hour and then they just make and eat soup and they try to make it like romantic they also just hang out and then they go watch some fireworks together that look more like blobs because christian just made like a bunch of lines in the sky and then colored the sky around them so there's just these like white blobs with color in them and there's this poem where sonichu tries to rhyme sweetheart with something but fails so he rearranges it to heart sweet instead and that just becomes a thing why is this comic not in a vault so eventually sonichu meets the mayor of quickville who is chris chan naturally and ends up under his care why is it that these Pokemon are capable of cognitive and independent abilities and yet they need to be taken care of like children or normal Pokemon to the point where it makes it kind of creepy? I don't know. You're asking too many questions. Anyway, they end up in the mall and Sonichu complains about pickles on his burger. Christian hates pickles, so every good character hates them as well. The rival and arch enemy of this is Christian's name backwards and he shows up and tries to kidnap Rosichu and then Sonichu kicks his ass and he swears revenge. I'm also going to mention the sub-episodes to get them out of the way early. There are three, each of them basically revolving around the person called Ivy, who if you remember from my previous video was one of the fake girlfriends that the trolls used to make Chris Chan do weird stuff. In CWC Holding Out for a Hero and Wedding and Giant Penis, which is what they're called, Chris rescues her, marries her, and then fucks her. That's all we need to know. Also, in the penis comic, the penis is really out of proportion, so people actually think that Chris Chan took out his actual genitalia and put it on the page to trace it for his character. In the next issue, Darkness, Speed and Lightning, there's a scientist named Bill, who's apparently some character from a Pokemon game, and in this comic he gets some of Sonichu's DNA, fucks around with it. I think he wants to make a new Sonichu? He accidentally mixes Cherry Cola in there like a fucking idiot and Black Sonichu gets out. His name is technically Black Sonichu, but he's also called Blachu or Blake. I guess he's basically the Shadow the Hedgehog of this universe. Informal meeting is where they meet and fight Mary Lee Walsh. From now on we have to call her Slow Wheel though because in Chris's real life he got told by a troll pretending to be Miyamoto that he needed to change all the real life names in his comic. It's not as fun but what are you gonna do? There's also a heart meter in this comic. It's not health it's just an emotional thing that's brought up sometimes and other times it's completely forgotten but at least you know what it is when I mention it. Mortal Kombat is when Robotnik makes a metal sun shoe and everyone fights him the end. And shoe and prophecy is an interesting one. Allow me to have a more roundabout explanation. So Christian apparently thinks that he has some very distant Cherokee heritage that he says is like a lot more, or he plays up a lot anyway. And he plays it up in these comics as well because I guess he thinks it makes him special, or he should. He also pronounces it Cheoki or something like that. Is there's like a prophecy that him and Sonichu find in a cave that basically just summarizes the plot that happened. But then some ancient dude appears and even though he's supposed to be Cherokee or something, he wears this golden Roman clothing and Christian gets his powers. Also, there were other people that Christian talked to in real life at the time, someone called Sarah and her boyfriend. Chris liked Sarah in real life, so the boyfriend was kind of the problem for him, but they're both in the comic as characters for some reason, and they both get Sonichu powers for some reason, and I guess he doesn't talk to them that much anymore because they just disappear after this comic and one other comic. Chris Chan, after getting his powers, discovers that his Chris, uh, Chris Chan Chu Chris Chu, Chris Chu form is just blue recolor of Sonichu, so Sonic. So there's this one, and then there's another episode later on called The Evil That Stopped Quickville, and these are the only ones that Chris isn't the main character in at this point. All of the other ones now just have him as the main character. And this is also where he gets his medallion, which is supposed to be the source of his power, but it gets retconned later so that he's just powerful anyway, so I don't really know why the medallion is still there. There's now a short sub-episode called Jerkop Tas Cho Pai. A jerk cop is a jerk cop, which is basically any security personnel or employee in real life in malls or stores or the public that tells Chris to stop doing what he's doing and he sees this as terrible. He also spells catastrophe catastrophe all the time, so that's how we have to say it. So he fights them all alongside Slar Wheel the Witch for some reason. In Rise and Fall of My Heart, he tries to carry his sign to the mall and meets a girl who agrees to go out with him. He goes on a date with her with his heart meter fully risen and she says that she was just fucking with him the entire time. So his heart meter shatters and he gets sad and writes her a long poem about it. Also one of the mall cops he starts fighting gets a call from his wife that she's breaking up with him because he's evil. Evil in this comic is basically just anyone not like Chris Chan. He goes, my soul hurts and then Chris goes, so did mine and then it ends. Like a lot of things, this has the basis 
of something that actually happened in real life. There was a troll who had convinced Chris to go on a date with her, and while they were walking along in the mall, another troll comes along dressed as a pickle and takes her away from Chris. Yes, really. As some would say, he got cucked by the pickle man. There's another short sub-episode called Witch Confront that's really boring where the witch kidnaps Chris's mom and they fight at the end. The next big part of the saga is called Mick Attack, and it honestly is kind of... It's one of the most hilarious ones, but it makes no sense. There's this place called McDeville, which is just McDonald's. Like, I don't know if it's as a town or a food franchise or something, because it has Ville at the end of it, but you know. There are two main enemies here, WM Manager and B Manager Married Sensor Senor Comic, which no one knows what that means. I'm just reading it as it is, directly from the comic. So they all attack him and he has to summon Angelica Rosichu, his wind type, to blow them away, but then they come back. Then he unleashes Dark Bind, a cross between Sonichu, Link, and Darkwing Duck. This guy's side mission is to help his petrified girlfriend who needs to be freed using the seven Sonichu balls, which are basically a knockoff of the Dragon Balls. He also occasionally gets into conflicts with other Sonichus over getting said Sonichu balls. So as the fight goes on, Chris's Cherokee ancestor comes to him and says, look deep into your heart and all your friends and Facebook. Uh, specifically Facebook as well for some reason, and Chris summons his friendship powers as well as his female version, Crystal, to kill all the enemies, the end. Then there is Backyard Safari afterwards, which is just Jerkops being observed with a David Attenborough-esque parody. That's all it is. He also bowls them away with a bowling pin and says that you should aim for their genitals. There's an episode called Off Target where there's a super big cop called Baggett that kidnapped Chris and Crystal saves him. Sonichu babies is the time travel retcon episode. Five different chaotic types are introduced, and this Magichu, who is raised telepathically in a cave by Mewtwo. He farts in his meditation that causes him to wake up from his meditation, and also causes him to evolve into an unstoppable god who no one takes seriously because he's a fucking dumbass. Babies here are called Sonny and Rosie. I think, isn't Sonny a Japanese word? He, he d isn't referring to that word, whatever it is, he's just- I guess he thinks that it's just a word he can use for this as well. Magichan is also continuously monitoring every home in Quickville to make sure no homosexuality is going on. He's 1984-ing gay people. Because remember, Chris hates gay people, this never changes. When hedgehogs meet is when Black Sonichu steals the Sunstone, which is guarded by Flame the Sunbird, which is just Kazooie from Banjo and Kazooie. It's not even a real color, it's just Kazooie. What does the Sunstone do? I don't fucking know. My best friend's Cherokeean. Ch hang on, I need to pronounce this like Chris. Cherokeean wedding. Sarah marries her new love interest, the Jack Knight Yu Gi Oh card. Th the card. She marries a card. As Chris proudly shows how not in love with her he is anymore. Her original boyfriend, I guess her real life boyfriend, shows up in this comic and kidnaps her so Christian goes to fight him. One lucky day. This one is actually kind of cute. I mean, really? Chris's dog Paddy died in real life, unfortunately, and there's photos of his dog in the comic and Chris gives her home in Quickville, basically like passing on her memory to live happily in this place that he really loves in his mind. So that was actually pretty cool. So in this town now, if you remember in real life, PVCC is his real life college that he went to, and it's now an acronym for Private Villa of Corrupted Citizens, which is where all the villains live. I guess he hated his college experience so much he made it into a thing in the comic. Shattered hearts and entrapment. All of the villains attack the city, ending in Crystal getting pulled into this like dark mirror hole portal. And as Chris is trying to pull her back, his medallion like gets like pushed into the portal for a minute, which makes it like have dark power. And it powers up Chris Chan's backward name villain as as Christian's full name backwards villain that's how he powers up his name is just longer and i refuse to pronounce it no joke he is chris but gay that's it that's his that's his thing he's basically described in the comic as chris if chris gave into his urges which implies that chris even though he hates gay people has urges whatever that means and Dark Chris basically just did them. They fight and some information is revealed. They need seven Sonichu balls to free Crystal, and he also realizes the Sonichu balls were also created in the rainbow thing from before, and Sonichu has a brother as well who's called Bionic. So Chris has Magichan make a giant hamster ball that travels back in time to Chris's high school years to get the Sonichu ball that Bionic has, which happens in the comic called Time for a Ball. 
Side note, in high school, in real life, Krish gets hit in the head with a basketball during his high school and makes his first proper OC, which is Orange Sonichu called Bionic, who likes to play basketball. That's the OC, that's all he does. In Time Hogs, Darkbind already has two of the Sonichu balls, and Chris falls out of time for some reason in like a vortex, and all of real life moments of Chris's flash by. Magichan says that Chris will come back when he comes back, so Chris is just out of the story for now. What happened in real life is that people were calling out or criticizing how much of a self-insert Chris's character was, so he takes it out so they'll stop complaining, I guess. Rage Against the Garbage is going to be a wild fucking ride. So they continue looking for the Sonichu balls and they go to a place called Four Cent Garbage, which is a magazine company. The magazine company is owned by Jason Hendrick Howell, who is basically one of the trolls who Chris hated. And as you can guess from Four Cent Garbage, he's like trashing 4chan, I guess. Sonichu and Rosachu go there because the magazine is full of slander and memes to make people suffer, apparently. And they see themselves in these magazines being slandered. In real life, Chris hated when others drew Rosachu with a dick. So in the comic, she sees herself being slandered in this way, and they go there to ask for the slander to stop. They think that they can just knock on the door and ask people. And Rosachu says the solution is for her to take naked pictures of herself with Sonichu to prove that she is a real woman. And she and Sonichu do that. Zupina Rosachu, one of the people there who is an underage child, wants to join in. But Sonichu says, Sorry, you can't because there are stupid laws in place to prevent you from doing stuff like this. Maybe some other time. Which is like a weird sort of insight into implications about Chris's opinion on underage nudity. At one point in the building, they go up to the elevator. They see one of the trolls making more slander and one of the floors they pass. And Chris's fist comes out of the time portal just in time to punch the guy in the face. While Sonichu and Rosachu high five. On another one of the floors, Obama is painting the White House black because Chris's dad made that joke and Chris thought it was funny. When they finally get to the top floor, they meet Jason. He's a coked figure who says that he lives for nothing but human suffering. They then ask him to take down the slander, but he says no when they go to leave. He says, have fun with your pickle and throws a pickle at Rose at you that he just has. She grabs it, turns it into a lioness and beats him up. In Spring Break 2008, there's an evil Rosachu type of thing called Sylvana that lives on the moon that was raised by an evil wizard person called Count Graduon, who's actually a symbolic representation of Chris's high school graduation experience. He hates it so much that he made it a villain in his comic. Sylvana has dark powers and she was raised as a hermaphrodite, which is in exchange for her dark powers. And today she decides to go to Earth to kill some people. There's some side romance between Black Sonichu and someone called Bubbles, one of the other female characters. They go off to secretly have sex during spring break, and Sylvana disguises herself as Bubbles and goes to fuck Black Sonichu instead. I'm not kidding. Paralytic things come out of her vagina that knock out and paralyze him, and she stuffs him under a bridge. She then goes to do the same as to Bubbles and disguises herself as Black Sonichu. Magichan's psychic powers tell him this is happening and he tries to warn Bubbles, but she tells him to fuck right off, and Chris Chan has to go save her instead. He transforms Sylvana into Meg from Family Guy and makes out with her, and it saves the day somehow. I don't- I- I've tried to understand what I am seeing, but I don't. In Date Ed, all of the hedgehogs go to school to learn how to meet and date and form relationships. Keep in mind throughout this entire thing that I'm explaining that Chris actually wishes for real schools to have exactly what he's describing here, because he thinks that this is necessary information that children should have in a class like this called Date Education. Basically, the hedgehogs flirt anonymously with each other on computers, and then meet up with who they were flirting with and go to have sex. That's the course. That's the class. Also, their original teacher that they came in with has disappeared, and another teacher comes into the room to end the lesson and casually explains that the previous teacher had gotten into a car crash and died during the lesson. So in real life, when this was being written, Ivy, Panda Halo, and another fake girlfriend were all in Chris's life at that moment. Two of them had died off because I guess the trolls got bored, and in the end of the comic issue, Chris leaves this chick track style like like template thing where he writes down his actual feelings about these real life events that he believed actually happened. So when these two like troll girlfriends died off, he believed that they actually died, and he wrote that God luckily took out two of the girls so Chris didn't have to choose between them. That's actually what he believed. 
In CWC Defense, all of the villains in his life want to prevent him from having sex for some reason so they come to have a big battle with him. In Director Amenities, Chris comes back from the time thing with a vengeance. He no longer cares about the Mary Sue criticism so he makes himself the strongest Mary Sue of them all. He has a final form called Colossal Chris which is him at his normal size, with blue fuzz on his arms. He pulls the Asper Chu characters from their universe and purifies them to, to live in his universe. He literally cures them of autism, his words not mine. This is also when the troll torture porn comic happens which I'll explain. At one point in real life, Chris's website gets taken and they force him to kill off a character in his comic to get it back. So this character, I forget who the character was, but it was actually someone else's fan character, not even something that Chris made himself, and I guess he technically stole it for his comic, so he ends up killing him. So in this comic, he puts all of the trolls on trial because they're all characters in his comic now, in this sort of kangaroo court for murder, and they all get horribly tortured because it starts off with them being tried for the murder of that character but it also extends to them just being mean to him in real life, and all of the Sonic 2 characters including the... I guess he set up like parents for the character that died off and th the parents come in to like torture the trolls. It is like, it is legitimately, I don't think I can show this. So at the end of the episode, Chris asks Magic Chan to send him into the future so he can find a cure for gayness. He finds some scientists who are working on it and they say that they need the blood of the most pure straight man in existence for the cure to be finished. So then Chris disguises himself as his future self and goes to fuck his future wife, curing his own virginity and making him the purest straight man on the planet so he can give blood to them. He finds the cure from them and goes back in time to put it in the water supply and everyone is fine. No one is gay ever again. Despite the time paradoxes that this might have caused, if he gets the cure from the future and sends it to the past, that means they wouldn't have had to work on the cure in the future so that they wouldn't have a cure for him to take back to the past so they wouldn't have- In the issue Clip Snow, Liquid, like the real life troll Liquid Chris, in the comic gets burned away in hell like he gets sent to actual hell and burned until he dies and his cleansed soul is now sent off to be reincarnated i guess as a son of jew chris then goes to four cent garbage and 9-11s it and millions of people working in the building die chris is shown with a single tear going down his face as he says if only the trolls weren't trolls this wouldn't have happened Clyde and another person, Thaddeus, are in a relationship apparently and they jump down the elevator shaft embracing each other and saying that they don't want to die by Chris's hand so they'll do it themselves. Oddly tragic. There's also another special episode called Gun Comic where Liquid Chris is in a cabin with his girlfriend and Chris goes to break his kneecaps with a gun. The final installment is Sonichu Christmas which is really boring and about them having nice Christmas and everything going well. So that's the end. Chris has been given money for a comic but it's been like five years or so and no new comic has been produced. When I said before when he did like, like if you pay this much to the, the in the Patreon thing, you'd get a comic. It's just like a short like one page comic about something that you want, like an insight to the characters. There's no actual like full on issues after this. I guess this is the end. That's that. That was the most retarded thing ever and I don't know why I looked into this. In all honesty, I think the reason that people even pay attention to Sonichu in this way is because of Chris Chan. It's part of this weird thing about him on the internet that people just really like to look at, so Sonichu becomes part of it. I think if Sonichu was just made by some random on DeviantArt, people would make fun of it but they wouldn't really care, and I don't think it would be poked at as much, because it is just a, like a blob of nonsense. I hope you had fun listening to this at least, even if you're as confused as I am. Now I'm actually going to go look at something fun and worthwhile for a next video topic. It's been a bit tumultuous because university has been a bit busy and I'm just really tired, but I'm glad that I made this at least. See you around.